Number eight, avoid colon cancer. Anybody seen a colon cancer before on a picture? This is what it looks like. So your colon is usually this beautiful, nice, round thing. And when you have this colon tumor, the thing that you see kind of in the upper left of that, that's the tumor there, okay? It's a big problem. Every colon cancer of that size requires surgery. So if I can get you guys to avoid surgery by modifying your diet, that's great. More studies, lifestyle modifications, colorectal cancer. There is a very strong link between red meat and processed meat intake and colon cancer. That's one of the strongest associations we have with the exception of smoking and alcohol intake. Smoking, alcohol intake, red meat, all very strongly associated with colon cancer. Another study showing exactly the same thing. They're saying high intake of red and processed meat is associated with increased risk. So the evidence support limiting the intake of that. How does this happen? How do we know? Why, what is the connection you know, molecularly between red meat and all these cancers? Well, these are the plausible mechanisms. They haven't really narrowed it down to one, but one of them, they think heterocyclic amines that are released when you barbecue your meat or you cook it at a high temperature, that's actually a carcinogen, and they think that that can promote the DNA mutations. And then next, you have endogenous formation in the GI tract of N-nitroso compounds. These are carcinogenic. The interesting thing about this one is there's a lot of new research coming out about our gut microbiome, which means the bacteria that we have in our colon. And a lot of these bacteria can metabolize all these chemicals and turn them into the nitroso compounds, which are carcinogenic or not. So we're finding that many people have different bacteria that do this metabolism or not and can result in formation of colon cancer cells. So very interesting brand new research on that. Other strategies, I'm going to touch on all these briefly because there's such good evidence about it, I find it very fascinating. So number one, fiber. We know fiber prevents colon cancer, but did we know that it prevents it by 50%? That's cutting your cancer risk by half if you can intake fiber. Fiber has a lot of anti-cancer phytochemicals. You have polyphenols, carotenoids, all these other things. They're all present in leafy green vegetables, whole vegetables. That EPIC study, the Oxford EPIC study I talked about earlier, this is another factor they looked at. So they took all these people and they looked at colon cancer, 500,000 people. They found that doubling your fiber consumption decreases your incidence of cancer by 40%. So fiber is very good, is the bottom line for all those studies. Moving on, B vitamins. So B vitamins alter your DNA transcription. They alter how your cells divide. Okay, all of this numbers up here, it's very scientific jargon for the metabolic pathways that, talk, that describe formation of cancer cells. So a high intake of folic acid reduces your risk of colorectal cancer and adenomas. What's important, and I want you guys to take away from this, is this association is only correct for natural folic acid intake from your diet, not for supplement. They actually took a look at folic acid supplements. If you take one milligram a day, it's harmful causes a 2.3 fold increase in your number of colon adenomas, which is a pre-colon cancer. So again, supplementation, folic acid, not a good thing. Whole foods are much better. Grapeseed extract, briefly, another very powerhouse as far as nutrients are concerned, um, again, shows that it prevents apoptosis, or I'm sorry, it induces apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. So this is very, very important when it comes to cancer cells and killing them off before they divide into a huge tumor. Psilobinin, that comes from milk thistle. I don't know if you guys have heard of milk thistle teas, herbs, very, very good for you. Also, it's chemopreventative. It targets DNA right at the source when it is mutating and it inhibits that. It's also anti-inflammatory, so this is something that's very good to incorporate into your diet. Uh, and the other thing about it too is it's not toxic to your normal colon cells. So it's not gonna hurt the normal cells that you have, but it will prevent the colon cancers from happening. Anybody know what this awesome molecule is? No takers? Turmeric, curcumin, or olena in Hawaiian. It's an exceptional antioxidant. This is one of the superfoods. If I could buy stock in any food, this would be it because the research on it is huge. So it promotes apoptosis. 
It inhibits DNA mutations. It inhibits cancer cell dividing, metastasis, and it's also a powerful anti-inflammatory. So how does it work? Again, a whole lot more scientific jargon here, just talking about every little molecular pathway that it alters or inhibits. It's a very, very powerful supplement. Now, by supplement, I use that term loosely. This grows in your backyard. This grows here. We are so lucky to live in a place where we can just go pick it and put it as a whole food into all of our meals. So molecular targets of curcumin, it's overwhelming. Look at all these little DNA pathways they've found that curcumin inhibits. It's an overwhelming, very exciting compound. So curcumin in summary seems to be one of the most promising, widely available chemo preventative agents, okay? And it's not only for colon cancer. Curcumin, look at all these areas that it has been shown to actually help. So you have wound healing, cardiovascular disease, you have Alzheimer's, epilepsy, all sorts of things. So this is one of those you wanna remember from tonight's talk for sure. One more compound here. Any takers on what this one is? Yeah, Camellia sinensis is green tea, okay? Strong antioxidant, prevents reactive oxygen species. So it prevents growth factors, okay? Um, and it induces apoptosis. So another one, very good. Lastly, I cannot talk about colon cancer without talking about alcohol and tobacco. These are the two very main big things that cause colon cancer. So if you consume 30 grams of ethanol a day, you increase your risk of colon cancer by one. More than 45 grams, you're gonna increase it to 1.4. So big promoter in this. And why does this happen? Long-term alcohol consumption, it decreases your absorption of the B vitamins. Remember how we talked about B vitamins folate preventing cancer? If you can't absorb your B vitamins, you will have um, more DNA changes, more mutations towards cancer, okay? And then tobacco, of course, you have all these direct carcinogens, aromatic amines, nitrosamines, heterocyclic amines. Um, these are all direct carcinogens. They cause direct cellular damage. And of course, the last one, physical activity. So most physically active people, they have a 24% lower risk of colorectal cancer development compared to people that sit around all day. Probably again, due to decreased obesity. So something that we have to remember, we have to keep active, okay?